Hola, feliz miércoles, happy Wednesday. Hoy vamos a seguir estudiando las lecciones en español y estamos en la lección número 16. Déjenme abrir el, um, el PowerPoint. Y como expliqué el día de que fui live, la razón que tengo esta corona aquí es porque la experiencia de las Miss Universo en Venezuela es grandísima. Es, una, es un evento que hasta los negocios cierran para poder um, ver todo, las cuatro horas de elección para, esta, para, para elegir a una reina de la belleza universal uh, de Venezuela. So, the reason I have the crown, as I, I explained in uh, my live on Sunday, is because in Venezuela, the Miss Universe pageant is huge. And um, I'm going to read how a, a little bit of, you know, what it's about and how it comes together. And then hopefully at the end of this, this presentation, I will have a quick video about the most beautiful faces for Miss Universe that will be participating in 2023. I think it's January 13, the, the overall Miss Universe is going to be in um, January 13, 2023. So Venezuela has produced seven Miss Universe winners, second to the US who has produced eight winners, 1979, 1981, and then But there's the different winners in this um, in this uh, narrative, but I'm not gonna name them all. It's all in the, you can see them here in this little cutout right below the crown. There are Miss Venezuela schools and beauty factories in which girls as young as five years old are trained to be the next potential Miss Venezuela. At both the schools and factories, the young girls and women are taught how to walk properly given beauty tips and given lessons in proper etiquette. Once a candidate is shortlisted for the pageant, she begins an intensive training program, which can last for six months. She receives coaching and speech, physical fitness, makeup, modeling, and all the other skills required for the competition. Plastic surgery and cosmetic dentistry are optional and some delegates elect to use padding. As the Miss Venezuela broadcast lasts up lasts up to four hours long with countless musical numbers and dances. Rehearsals require weeks of preparations. And, and dance rehearsals require weeks of preparation. Contestants also participate in official photo shoots and also fittings by fashion designers. I have a little bit of an issue with the plastic surgery and cosmetic dentistry portion because I think this is me. It's my, um, my uh, opinion that it's a little bit of cheating when you use plastic surgery because you're trying to reward just natural beauty. But once you get, get into the plastic surgery, they use it a lot in Venezuela, I have to say, they have their noses reshaped. They also have breast enhancements. I think the ears are pinned back. So that's a little bit of cheating for me. I think that it would be best to see beauty as they were born um, natural without any enhancement but you know that's that's my opinion my opinion doesn't matter that's how they do it and and we will see at the end with that video some of the beauties that you can tell a little bit that have been enhanced a little bit and some that are completely natural so let me go back to The, um, the slide presentation. Ejercicio, we're going to check the answers. Lección número nueve en el libro. We're going to talk about is and, um, and how you can, um, we say it, uh, it's got two, we got two options. We say es o está. Uh, mi mamá es, la casa está. My mom is, the house is. Donde, como, where, and how. Uh, palabras para recordar, words to remember, conversación, conversation, ejercicio en traducción, tarjeta recordatoria, tarea, versos bíblicos y video. This is the exercise in writing. We were supposed to uh, take out the A-C-I-O-N at the end of the noun and convert it to the past tense of the first person and third person. 
So accumulation becomes accumulé. You take the A-C-I-O-N, you add the E to make it accumulé. Uh, and in accum for third person, it's accumulo. And in, in the English past tense, it's accumulated. The same thing goes for accusation, administration, admiration, adoration, concentration, confirmation, consideration. So they turn into acusación, administración, admiración, adoración, concentración, confirmación, consideración, and nouns. And when you remove the A, C, I, O, N and add the E, it be, for all of them, it becomes the first person in the past tense and the third person in the past tense. Acusé, acusó, administré, administró, admiré, admiró, adoré, adoró, concentré, concentró, confirmé, confirmó, consideré, consideró. Any questions, just add them in the comments and I will answer uh, as soon as possible. Uh, let me know if you did okay with this uh, exercise and if you have any issues turning the noun into the past tense on the fir first person and third person past tense. Now we're going to go into learning the two verbs in Spanish that mean is. Es y está. Está es, es usted. It's used, I'm sorry. It's used to say where things are or to ask where things are. ¿Dónde está María? Where is Mary? Donde is where? Donde está la estación? Where is the station? Mi papá está en Cuba. My father is in Cuba. Está is also used to say how people are or to ask how people are. ¿Cómo está su mamá? How is your mother? ¿Cómo is how? ¿Cómo está usted? How are you? Mi papá está muy bien. My dad is well. Mi mamá está muy bien. My mom is very well. Short rule. Donde, where, and cómo, how. Donde, Está, como está. The following dialogue is repeated millions of times every day in the Spanish speaking world. Remember this. Como está usted? How are you? Bien, gracias y usted? Well, thank you. Well, thank you. And, and you? Uh, muy bien, gracias. Very well, thank you. Como está usted? Bien, gracias y usted? Muy bien, gracias. That's the exchange that you have it every day, all day long at our. Um, Latin American countries and Spain as well. In the Caribbean, Spanish speaking Caribbean countries like the Dominican Republic, uh, Cuba, um, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is part of America, but um, that's considered also uh, Hispano Hablante, Spanish speaking. So, palabra para recordar in Spanish, I'm going to say them all and then I'm going to say them all in English. El diablo, el infierno, la oficia. La oficina, un hombre, una mujer, la crema, el club de tenis, ¿cómo está usted? Pero bien, en la casa, en casa, en el refrigerador, en el sofá. In English, is the devil, hell, the office, a man, a woman, the cream, the tennis club, how are you? But, well, in the house, at home, in the refrigerator, on the sofa. So if you notice in the book, in the book, palabras para recordar are usually... Um, are usually, let me, palabras para recordar are usually to um, use with the following, with the next exercise. So uh, let's see what the next, so now we have the uh, conversation, la conversación, como esta usted, that's the question, and then the answer, respuesta, bien gracias y usted, muy bien gracias. Uh, ¿Cómo está su mamá? Mamá está muy bien, gracias. ¿Cómo está su papá? Papá está bien, gracias. And this is a good conversation to have available if you're traveling because that's how you open up um, a conversation with anybody, with anybody uh, that you know or anybody on the streets. ¿Cómo está usted? Bien, gracias. ¿Y usted? Muy bien, gracias. Uh, ¿Dónde está su mamá? Mamá está en casa. ¿Dónde está papá? Papá está en la oficina. ¿Dónde está la crema? La crema está en el refrigerador. ¿Dónde está el conductor? El conductor está en el tren. And so on and so forth. So this conversation, this conversation is really important to have available just to practice on asking people how they are, how their relatives are, 
uh, things that are important. Now we're going to see the exercise in translation. We're going to translate the below sentences in Spanish. And this is a homework for you guys. Where's the station? Where's the bank? Where's the telephone? Where's your father? Where's the car? The mechanic is in the garage. All of those, you are going to be translating them into English. And remember, this is lesson nine in the book. So if you need any help, uh, you can look at um, those pages uh, starting from page 62, lección número nueve, and you will have the answers accordingly. This is the reminder card. This is what tells you, ¿Dónde está? Where is el banco? ¿Dónde está el banco? ¿Dónde está su papá? ¿Dónde está Roberto? ¿Dónde está la crema? ¿Cómo está? How are you? How is? Uh, ¿Cómo está usted? ¿Cómo está Roberto? Uh, how are you? How is Roberto? How is your mom? ¿Cómo está su mamá? How is your dad? ¿Cómo está su, su papá? Uh, bien, gracias. Very well, thank you. Tarea, it's going to be leer las lecciones número 9 y 15 del libro. So, let me show you. Lección número 9, lección número 9 is what we just went through. We're going to see uh, sentence forming exercises. These are important steps, um, practice skills that you need to um, have. So if you have the chance, go over them and uh, practice. Same thing. I have la, uh, the, la tarjeta recordatoria right there. And then uh, lección 15. Lección número 15, trabajar, to work, to act, ver, to see. So now we're getting into the actual verbs and how you um, uh, translate them into the past tense. And again, the book takes you through the same thing, the words to remember, conversación, uh, sentence forming exercise. And we will be seeing this eventually later on because right now we're on lesson nine in the book. So again, I wanted, I want to end this uh, presentation with Bible verses that are related to kindness. And the reason I'm doing this is because I think that you saw a couple of um, uh, lessons ago, I talked about how cruel people can be with each other. And I, I related it to the um, Shanquella Robinson's uh, case where the, it was seven friends that apparently ganged up on her and uh, deleted her. Unfortunately, it should have never happened. So, and if you got a chance to see the video on how this poor woman was just completely beaten by this, this supposedly a good friend, um, it's just heartbreaking. So we need to think about being kind uh, to one another. Um, so Ephesians 4.31, put aside all bitterness, losing your temper, anger, shouting, and slander, along with every other evil. Efesios capítulo 4, verso 31, quítense de ustedes toda amargura, ira, y enojo, gritos, calumnias, y malicia. The most beautiful faces in, that will be Again, this is subjective. This is a guy that knows about the Miss Universe pageant and is talking about his most favorite, famous, uh, the, the fav most favorite beautiful faces that he thinks are going to be uh, in the selection process in the Miss Universe 2023. Again, this is somebody's um, idea of what beautiful is and uh, there are some faces that I agree and others are just, are okay with me. Uh, again, I think that we tend to agree with the faces that most resemble us or our culture. And um, I don't know if I, I, I talked about in Venezuela, there's a lot of European, there's, uh, a lot of European uh, history and background. So a lot of the choices have uh, the beauty standards for them is more European 
uh, whereas mine, I like more the Caribbean or uh, Central American, more uh, ethnic type look than the European. Again, that's that's what I like. This guy um, likes the more, he thinks that the European is going to be, the European look is going to be uh, the most, the one that's going to earn more titles. So let me show you before I, I, I keep talking about what I think, what uh, my beauty standards are and what he shows. So let me show the video, share my screen. And the it's titled Las 16 Latinas Más Bellas de Miss Universo. The 16 Lati uh, Latinas, Most Beautiful Latinas in Miss Universe 2022. There you have it. I talked to my sister about, um, she had con uh, confirmed Sunday for the live stream and she didn't realize that she was coming back from, I think from somewhere in California and she wasn't, She's. she said that she is going to try to join me for Sunday. So I don't know, I don't know if I should just go ahead and do the session on my own and um, I'm going to send a community uh, tab the question 
and on what topics you want me to talk about for Sunday. I think Sunday at five, I think it's a good time. And uh, if she joins us, great. If not, um, I try to get my other sisters to join and they're a little hesitant about um, being on social media and I don't blame them. Um, you know, again, probably their husbands have something to do with it. And, you know, for me to be in social media, it had to be a, um, approved by my husband because, you know, they're, they're the ones that try to protect us from just being crazy and doing crazy things. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to have my sisters at all uh, join. I think one of them said, well, I'll listen to the uh, to the session and you know if I have if I feel comfortable or confident enough to join I'll join so I won't hold my breath so anyway I will um, have uh, another session what's today Wednesday um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that one on Friday if not maybe if I can create one tonight, I can have one tomorrow. Um, otherwise, see you either Saturday or Sunday for the live. And uh, if nothing else, I will talk to you later. Adios.